what we've practiced. I I know we can do this. Mm -hmm. I know these can be fixed. And FP's like, well, we won the last game, so why not do what we just did? Sometimes you need every piece of that equation, though, to, to make work. your mm -hmm. gameplay work. And now that they don't have the Omni Knight, this could be a very different game, despite having, like, even if they have four of the five same heroes on the Fighting Papegas side. Fighting oh, here we go. They have been called Fighting Papegas. Yeah, I know. They have so many different names. How many different See, names Frank, are you going to call the all these teams? I had that joke ready if they would mess up. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. The, now we know why the they were. <laughs> Vegas, but Sorry, they haven't I given us an opportunity. You. Now we can't use it anyway. It's fine, Brian. Uh, yeah, it wasn't that good. I, 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 I was trying to save okay. it from yourself. So here it is. That's the TA that we were talking you about were talking game one. Game. Yeah. Weeha could even be playing this in the first phase. And I think so. The approach that we're going to see from Nygma in this game will be more in your face. Because mm. the, the more you split up like they did in the last game, if you can't enforce this split push and execute it correctly, you're giving Disruptor too good of a game. If your lineup can just run at the opponent and you're the aggressor, Disruptor is so much better on offense than defense. Yeah. Like It doesn't even come close. It might be the most polarizing hero in that aspect. There's so many supports that can kind of save, kind of catch. Mm -hmm. Disruptor's defense is so much dependent on the enemy heroes not being very mobile. Because okay. if they are, catching people in kinetic field uh, uh, Static Storm is extremely difficult against high mobility heroes. Doom is fast, TA is yeah. very mobile. Uh, you maybe get another hero that can just navigate fights, has some sort of mobility, force staff, whatever it is, uh, and, and you make those guys fight harder. So this time around, like you said, no Omni. Uh, any surprising bans apart from that? Pretty much the same stuff. Pretty much again. always PL when you pick Drow, the, the yeah. Viper Huskar against the TA. Yeah. Might consider Razor on the side of Fighting Pandas. Good against TA, good against Doom, goes with the Drow. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if they pick a third. Uh, just makes a lot of sense for their lineup specifically. Can you replace Omni for another save and still play Shadow Fiend? Like, could you play Shadow Demon or... There's obviously no IO. If they don't pick Razor third, I'm going to be really surprised. Third or fourth. Like, it's just... I, I like to address what the opponent did as immediately as possible. You see their mid laner, mm -hmm. and you have a hero that's not only good against their mid laner and their first pick, but it's also good with your drow. Like, there's very few mid lane right clicking range agi heroes. Razor, SF, TA, which is already taken, Viper, which is banned. Dying. What else is there? Yeah, I, I think one. Of the strengths of TA is that she just has inherently very few bad matchups. Yeah, yeah. I think Razor's yeah, the only, Razor's yeah, Razor's the only one that's left. Like. Yeah, I, I would be pretty surprised if they leave. Like, they're not going to take it on the Team Nigma side, so Faring Panthers isn't exactly scared of it being taken from them, but at the same time, like, it's going to be as good now as it is later, is what I mean. Like, they're not going to just keep picking bad yeah. heroes against Razor. I honestly think they might yeah. go for the Venge this time. Okay. Actually. I could on, be fine with Venge. On fighting pandas. Five but the thing for choosing Razor is how many opportunities are you going to have against Radiant Enigma team. team where you can definitely Beast say Master. that this pick is like an A-plus pick against them and can lead to essentially winning this draft? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, another B okay. Like, that, like, the problem I have with this Beast Measure pick compared to last game was last game he was against Arc Ward. He's gonna have a pretty solid lane against Arc Ward. And if they get like a Slark or like one of these types of heroes and then give it a okay, first off, they're already countered in the five position yeah. by this Wyvern against the Beastmaster. But well, second off, if they give it like a tri lane Slark type hero, Beastmaster's most feast or famine off laner. Like, he's top three or so for feast or famine. Like, that hero is either gonna get completely obliterated. Five or take remaining. for the game. Last game, they did put him safely. So that is a consideration yep. that Team Nygma has to really take into account. Could they consider going like a Timber Saw Radiant on Team Nygma, Team knowing Nygma. that... Okay, so they go as... I'm surprised. Is, they're gonna, they, Cinder and Sunny, they're going to just run it back. Uh, they're just going to do the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they actually are they, picking right. the other four heroes. Yeah, they don't care I think, what Nygma's doing. I think uh, after this Wyvern pick, Shadowfiend is a better pick than Razor. I think he's much, much better against Wyvern than Razor. Really? I think the static link on the target getting saved is yeah, pretty decent. but at the same time, then you have Razor and... And uh, Drow doing 90% no physical damage yeah. against a Wyvern who can curse and cold embrace. This is now true. instead you have a mixed a mixed damage mid hero that can bring the raises to the fight. If somebody gets saved by cold embrace, you're setting up a requiem as well. Like there's uh, Wyvern is a very delicate hero in that sense where I think cold embrace for like let's say beginners to intermediate players is one of the hardest spells to use in the whole game because it's mm -hmm. such a high risk spell if used incorrectly. And if you're making Wyvern's job more difficult, it's the same reason you don't like playing Wyvern against. Against invoker. It's like I'm cold embracing my guy. Coming. Here you go. Here's a sunstrike meteor, right? So if, oh, if he has to be a bit more careful with that. That's uh, that's and there's a secondary solution for physical damage. They're gonna grab Lich as well. Only deals with auto attacks, by the way. Yeah. W. So it doesn't prevent damage from the Drow third spell. Okay. Uh, on the Lich. So it's not 
a perfect solution, but it does go very well with heroes like Doom that yep. just want to run into the run run into the middle uh, and soak up a lot of damage. And this is going to be a core Doom, so not nearly as much as he just going to blink in and die. Right. Uh, but he is still vulnerable. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes like like Vlad's. BKB blink shivas or something. You and know, in like... this game, you can team fight. You have yeah. a wyvern and a lich. Yeah, yeah they can not... do a lot. You can you can flat out in this kind of fight. The uh, this kind of game, the way GH played last game, if he plays it the exact same way this time with how he initiates fights, it's gonna work. Because this time you will have doom though, right? Oh uh, yeah, sorry. So we'll just have mind control doom. Yeah, same doom gonna... thing though. You're gonna ice armor him. He's gonna jump in, and then if things get real rough, you call him brace. Yep. Yeah. And the only thing you're really dying to right now is the shadow fiend. So if you keep him alive against that, if somebody gets on top of the SF controls him. Ember. This is, uh, see, it's just its just a change up. Like no matter how you look at it, Nygma can fight now. They can go in. If you don't like Ember uh, against the Shadow Fiend, they're not playing against each other in the lane, obviously. Ember yeah, will be in the side no, lane. Yeah, no, it's safe lane Ember. Um, and Shadow That's Fiend so will strange. not be like, yeah, what is So what does FP need right here? What is, can they, I don't want to say win the draft, but they could definitely lose it here. <laughs> but yeah. put them over the top right now. How's our team fight look? The same as we had before, for the most. Well, no, we don't have Omni Knight, so who's gonna? I think they're probably gonna do something pretty basic, like an ogre or like a. How like is a how is support Veno in this game? He's against TA. Oh, support he's Veno. really good against Ember and Lane as a support. Okay. The other side lane matchup is Doom, who is also good against as a support in lane. It is it a gives, greedy support that Owie likes to play. It gives team fight. It helps them zone control and push towers, and it deals a lot of damage against Wyvern. So, but maybe what? a possibility. It gives vision for Glimpse. Too. I like if you're Tusk chasing, as well, you by just, the way. Yeah, Tusk is... I like Tusk a lot. He's a bit of a trap against Lich Wyvern, I want to say. Okay. It's going in as Tusk is hard. But the okay. save is nice against. Uh... Uh, well, I, ooh, okay. whoa, oh, that zero. was not what I was expecting. That is not uh, at all what I was expecting either. Okay. I was going to say that I like that FP on on one hand says that this is what we're doing. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> this is they don't. Well, you said it sometimes. It's sometimes it's better to just do what you do. Yeah. And you don't want to make it complicated. They are going to play optimal. You, they they, In they terms play of their this, lineup. Right. They play strat their, their strat optimally. Yeah. And now it's something that maybe Enigma they've only seen it once now and it didn't obviously work in the end, but they feel confident. They know where they're going. They know the items they need to build. They don't have to. There's not that confusion that we saw with Nygma. I mean, Jakira has a bit of overlap with what I was looking for in the Veno, right? Yeah. It's the magic damage against the Cold Embrace. It's the strong laning stage against these melee heroes. Whether it's Ember or Doom, you're facing Jakiro has a good matchup there yeah. in securing the lane. So mm -hmm. I definitely see where they're coming from. I wasn't really thinking about the hero, but I don't think it's a bad pick. Yeah, okay. I think they're going to look to aggro into this Ember with the Drow like they did last game. Drow, Drow Jakiro is a great lane. Yeah. Jakiro can kind of front line as a ranged hero. It's very tanky and. Slow heroes down so Drow can hit. Yeah, I Very actually good. surprisingly think oh, they gave oh. Panda's lineup a pretty good game despite giving them four out of the five same heroes. I don't think that their lineup on Team Nigma is like surprisingly good against. Right, it's not no. dominant. It's not like yeah. you look at that and you go, oh, well, that's a wipe. Like, like I mean, oh, they clearly that. recognized what they did last game. They're and just they, gonna they start. Uh, by no means am I saying, wow, Fighting Panda's is all of a sudden gonna win this series, but I, I actually put this pretty even on the draft, so I. It's I, fair to say. I think, I, I, I think they made it hard for themselves again by they, picking this Ember Spirit last and making Doom Core against a heavy physical lineup, so by no means is this super straightforward, but I think their kit is better this game for Team Nigma, mm -hmm. even though I liked their draft last game. So well, they I, can finish this. Time they can fight. Yeah, yeah this say, time yeah. they have. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. They can play all the all parts of the game now. Yeah, right? because it, it seemed like before they just couldn't finish. Yeah, because they were constantly, like you said, they couldn't initiate, and it's like, and if they did, all the wheels would just fall off. Right. Yeah. I also, I also so, think we have Weha on his probably best hero right now. That's true. Well, let's find out if this is going to be our biggest upset, or if Nigma has figured out this Drow lineup. We're going to get back to our casters who are going to start our game. Thank you, Rob. Yes, game two now. Fighting Pandas up against Team Nygma. And as the panel said, so Fighting Pandas, they've got a pretty similar lineup. Four of the, at the same heroes as last game. Team Nygma, they have switched it up. They've definitely gone for a less greedy lineup, right? A lineup that's more ready to fight them. Uh, but but do you feel that much more confident, or do you think they've sort of made a mistake here? I don't feel so... Well, what do we have here? Oh, oh. beautiful shots here of uh, the outdoors, of course. It's getting a little dark, a little cozy. You know, everybody grab your, your warm cocoa, your blankets, and get yourself all snuggled up for, for this next one. I wonder if we could control the camera somehow. What can we? Can we? Okay, let's go left. Can we go left? Can we go left? No, we're going oh. left. Oh. 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 
We are. Oh, we're going left. Right, stop. Go. Stop. Go, go, go. go down. <laughs> oh, no, we're going left. See, look at this. Still this left. is live. Just to show you, lads and ladies, this is live. This isn't we're some in control. Pre we're flying this right now. We're in the. We're how, actually how, in the whole cockpit. How do I land this lizard? I need to. Just. Oh, let's, well, let's focus. Let's get back to the Dota's. Uh, my helicopter skills are a little scary, and I don't want to crash the chat. Beautiful so, uh, views, though. Be beautiful. Thank, thank you for this. So yeah, it is. That's no problem. No worries. I brought my own helicopter, of course. You know that that TI money, you know, builds up. You know, I've got oh, my, look, it's my the own same heli. thing, but in oh, the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's fly ourselves gracefully down into the lanes of Dota 2. Yeah, we see some. Look at these snowballs, snowballs in the distance. Yeah. A little bit of fun and games there. Beastmaster running around with his ball, and there he is. There's definitely role-playing this tournament, right? The role-playing the I want to do like that, but nice that last game. You know, you don't see they're looking for teams. Snake King is ready to make some money. He's looking for looking, sponsors. Looking for you know? sponsors, like yeah. That. Oh, yeah no, they're in the minor. Someone should sponsor them. I mean, right? after that game one performance, they can pull that out a second time in a row against Team Nigma. You know, finding pandas, they're, they're no longer the team to meme about. They're the team to dream about. But we'll see. Can they do it a second time in a row? As I say, Team Nigma, they've given them very similar resources to do so. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you reckon? And pandas for, for a second time after seeing game one? I mean, I can't say for sure. I can't be super mm. confident, but Nigma they took a completely different approach, the opposite approach, I even have to say. Like, they went from having these two super greedy cores into TA and Ember, right? And TA, we haven't really seen her completely stomp SFs on mid. She can do well, but... Yeah, it, it can kind of go both ways. Uh, yeah. Brawl can still farm. He that, can go to the sure. jungle, yeah. I think, you know, especially after seeing what Brawl did last game, you're like, yep. right, last game, Brawl, he died four times in the laning stage. He still had a phenomenal game. So, exactly. you know, you're picking this hero to have that edge, but I don't think Brawl's going to care too much. And I'm thinking about Miracle and his Ember. I think the oh, point with this Ember is to get on top of that Brawl early on easily and just blow her up, stop her from actually having game like she had in that last no. match. And I do I do heavily feel, you know, Ember is a hero, he, especially in the safe lane, he's got a snowball somehow, right? If this hero starts to fall behind... But, but it's look what you're playing against. You're playing versus Jakiro and Beastmaster. It's not going to be easy, lane. yeah. Absolutely, no. You, you said sort of last game, you know, fighting pandas, they, they didn't necessarily have great lanes. But this time around, I think they're they've, better, got, yeah. they've got some stronger matchups. Uh, even on the safe lane as well, you have Disruptor and Draw Ranger. I think those two heroes work really well right now together. But look at this. You have this... Uh, vision, you basically have vision on a hero that you hit with Moon Meander, and then Drow can follow up. What's the eyes on the mid? You've got to sort of ask yourself, you know, if he was able to have such a game as he did last game where he fed a few times in mid, what will happen if they, they don't kill him off? Oh. Easy. Thunderstrike gives you vision for E to come in closer and yeah. just attack you. And, and, and this is why you know, I really do rate Drow so highly at the moment in uh, in the carry position because this this era now with the multi-shot capability, you have so much killing potential in the lane. You've got to be careful. If you start to get low in that lane, you cannot escape the multi-shot. Down bottom, Nigma. They will get a good kill in turn for their carry. Miracle's able to pick up Snaking. Yeah, they have the double shield, right? You have the so ice, ice shield, and you have your Ember Spirit, so... I see, like, right here, you know, GH, he's, he's got to stay back. You know, as, as any time you're falling low, a potential multi-shot barrage from Envy, it, it's going to push you off the edge. And this used a... to be a, such a strong lane. Doom plus Winter Viren, it, it used to be almost uncounterable, but already they're not really feeling very well here. And he's doing a, a good job alongside Moon, keeping the pressure on Moon. We'll get run down a little bit now, Mind Control, trying with the Scorched Earth, but especially with that nerf, not really a, a scary amount of damage. Moon is more than fine to, to back off. Yeah, without that, Infernal Blade, he's not killing anyone. I mean, and you see that as well, you know, Envy pops the mango, because, hey, he knows, GH, GH just shows. Oh, oh, oh Envy gave Envy. up on it. Actually, you no, know, he's, he's going to believe in maybe the Thunderstrike to finish off the job a few clicks. It's that's... not going to be there, so Envy doesn't commit for the kill. GH will live. That's 50-50, right? There. Either way, right, GH has been left on no mana, no elf, so he's, he's got to play very safe, but uh, you, you would have thought that Envy would have wanted to commit for the kill, but some uh, sort, of, sort of rare sort of uh, safety play there from Envy, not, not trying just, to pull in for the kill and, and focusing on the farm, making sure not to, to, to play too aggressive, even though that time he would have got away with it. GH is still using so much region on this lane as a position four. He's wasting all of the gold that he's maybe getting uh, by Splinter Blast or Asks. Brile. 
playing a little bit too close to Shows Dash. Uh, some salves. Yeah, he's got salve mangoes out, so we able to regen up. But yeah, tra trading farm's good. I mean, I guess that's expected at the point, as long as the SF doesn't sort of mess up the, the first few levels, first few waves. You, you just get to the point where you put, you're just, you know, push and pulling the wave back, yeah, back six, and forth between the two Six months, mids. maybe a year ago, TA would stomp SS, but that time is long gone. Yeah. It doesn't happen anymore. So my control. control. Is he just going to solo die into Moon? I mean, Envy will join in for the kill. I don't even need, know if one, Envy perhaps. needed to. Uh, as Envy's going to be able to turn and push back GH. Uh, but Moon, I mean, Moon pretty much had that kill on his own as well. That was, you know, mind control. You know, and that isn't, this isn't your support GH team. That's, that's your core right there, feeding on the offlane. Yeah, maybe, maybe he didn't play a lot versus Disruptors since they were buffed because that Disruptor right now is scary. He slows and you down yeah. and damages you. Also, that hero always had the highest nuke on level one, and it shows. I will manage to get on top of Envy this time with a Splinter oh. Blast. Not quite enough. Envy will survive. He's got the Courier out. Did he have any regen coming out with it? Doesn't it's look like it. It's just he's got the Tangos. Tangos and Branches. But, uh, right, but so. no salve, so he's going to have to sit dive. back a bit. Radiant structures are it's hard to get to the Drow, though. Moon is playing. A little bit on the edge here, but the creeps pushing in. He's got to be a bit careful. Splinter Blast actually going to be off the mark for, for contacting with, mm. with Moon, so if Moon will be it, fine. Yeah, if he used it for Moon, I think he had a kill there, I, right? I think GH could have certainly landed it uh, on a creep closer to, to Moon, but wasn't Moon to be the case. Wanted to try and go... Well, I guess he, he knew that Envy was still low, was maybe yeah. banking on the fact that Envy would step forward. Yeah. And, yeah, going for, for sort of the play more focused on the court, uh, but does result in, in him getting nothing from that, that blast. Yeah, and so bad for them that Drow and Disruptor are living on Sliver of HP all the time on top lane, but they should dive her very soon, and there, there you go. go. Finally, they're able to collapse in, get round into the trees, and get Envy out of the lane. But this feels like it's a little bit too late. It feels like they should have been crushing this lane already, but they're unable to do so. He's he's gonna just get run down here. He has the shield. Oh. Does have the stick charge and maybe a bit of a bait. He's trying to turn it with the frost shield slow towards out. The line on the flame just... guard. He's still got a fairy fire as well to play with Miracle. But uh, playing very, very Kuro. risky. And in fact, he's, he's baited Kuro into a bit of a disaster himself. Kuro trying with the Duke Cow, but Snake King's out to finish him off. They're playing really well around these uh, fairy fires on the side of Migma. Oh, Owie! He gets the catch. The fire slow is there. Or Damage not quite, though. Fairy fire is forced fairy out. Fires. Envy? Oh, no. Yep, that's it. They agree so it's very nice. A bit more to plan for Nigma this top lane now. Two back to back deaths on the drow. You just have so much persistent damage on that top yeah. lane from the Viren, from the Doom. They're constantly hitting you, constantly hitting you with Splinter Blast, with Scorched Earth. You're bound to fall eventually as yeah. a drow ranger. And now they're actually going to find Moon as well here by the looks of it. Mind Control doing his best with the body blocks. As Moon, he's, he's going to fall it. For sure, as the two of them. It's a matter of time. GH needs one more. One more? All right, Lydie needs two more. <laughs> there we have it. They'll get the kill. As they are really starting to get that top lane back uh, back in their favor with those kills. Three in a row now between the two of them. As, you know, that, that's sort of the, where, where that, that dual lane does feel strong. If they're able to gap close, get on top, certainly, you know, certainly they're not able to, to sort of poke back at they're them. They're diving draw again, but mind control might be problems instead. Let's see. I mean, they're going to kill Envy. We lose well, at least just the one of them. Assume mind control can cut his way through the trees. He's able to get through one. He has the Quelling Blade, so he should be able to continue to, to juke this out. Goes himself a little bit deeper. Plays it safe with the smart TP. Mind control will escape. So that's pretty much what three deaths back to back now on Envy. You can't. You have to realize that you can't lane there anymore. He has phases. Once he gets phases, he has way too much armor plus the catch potential on him that you have to sack that lane and just farm the jungle. Same time though, you know, you're seeing Nigma getting away with the pressure up top. Fighting Pandas are able to do the same down bottom. Kuro is dead, Miracle trying for the chase down. Feeling confident now he has his level six. We'll throw out a safety remnant to jump himself back. At uh, least far enough away to, to try and escape, but the ice path will clip him. Has to use a, a second to get underneath the tower. We'll save him. Balls up. Yep. And we'll be able to get that refill uh, with that TP coming through. Top lane Moon. Moon. You can glimpse back one of them. Cannot lose back the two. Uh, a multi-shot used from Envy to try and dissuade GH from diving for more. Blast, it does hit. Not quite enough to kill him. Moon does mm, he this does time live. 
But you know, on this top lane, they're completely crushing the draw range. Now that's to be expected right after a while. Miracle, however, I think he needs to have a much better game than draw so that he's able to be a playmaker for his team. He needs to get this farm. He needs to have a good lane. And so far, he's doing all right. Oh, the diamond is for sure with the frost shield. Looking for Aoi. Miracle. Again. I mean, you, you, oh, okay. Another one. Okay. A little bit of the flashy stuff here from Miracle and Kurt Rose. They, they team up and they get up. And every single time, this that's got to start feeling frustration, frustrating for Fighting Pandas. They keep bringing Miracle so low, but he's still able to turn and make the plays on them. Top lane, Brawl's going to come in with the rotation, give them the manpower to, to drag back mind control and get a kill. Yeah, at the same time, you open up the mid lane completely for TA, right? So she's farming away, pushing in, going back to the jungle, farming some more. She even got the Iron Talent to, to work with, so great. I, still though, for Nigma, the win condition in that mid game is the Ember Spirit. He needs to have a good time and so far killing spree, he's yeah. gonna go, right? He's getting kill it's, after kill, right? It's all about him and his rotations. That's where we should really uh, pay our attention to. Yeah, looking to go for, for the Treads drums on the safe lane Ember, so very much these, these early stat items that are going to allow him to, to continue to play aggressively. Look at him, he bought phases, he has he another phases queued up. Sure, attack. why not? Why not? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's, he's, he's queued back to the, the standard phase. I mean, as I said, he did have the treads in, but phase obviously the the much more standard build. Drums? Yeah. And continue to play fast, as they certainly need him to, to do so. It's at least right. for, oh, well, I say space for We Are, but in, indeed We Are sort of making his own space here with the pressure he's putting on on mid. They've got to bring TPs in. Moon's going to drop the static storm, the Moon. Hey, he's going to be straight up there. The chamber right, bounces okay. out. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, with big balls, Chain Frost there, double hey, kill. Why? Yeah, they're not done, they should be able to get one of these traps slows off at least as how he tries to turn with the freeze onto GH, but GH counters the ice with a bit of ice of his own. The cold embrace keeps him oh. safe, he's able to turn, get the setup here, lines them up as now we are, could clean up even more. There's going to be four dead on Disaster. fighting pandas. Come in aggressively, MV. He cleans up one. Can he get We Are? We Are's into the mail. There's no detection down. We Are, he's actually ready to turn. In. Miracle comes that's in with a the backup. Wide. Refractions up, and indeed, that's all five of them falling on Fighting Pandas as Nigma group up in the mid lane. And Fighting Pandas struggle to, to return the fight. I said keep your eyes on Miracle, but he actually came the latest there just to clean up, just to kill off Envy in the end. They played so well as three, and those bounces from the chain from yeah, Tom Rich, they were smiling. all points. They were so good. Couple of kills for him. They were trying, basically what happened there, Brian was baiting Wee, he was baiting him, he knew the disruptor was coming in, but we dealt so much damage to him that yeah. Brian wasn't able to dish out any damage after the static storm was there, he wasn't able to fight, he needed to go back, but still Chain Frost just killed him off. And we're seeing, you know, 5.7k hero damage done already from Miracle, you can expect to see that skyrocket uh, very early on if, if Nigma are able to continue to play the game that they want to. Miracle's going to be up and down the map, ready to make aggressive plays, having yeah. Kuro's by his side. There's no sort of worry for me. Does get glimpsed back, but there we have an easy counter play as the Ember. A miracle drops down a remnant, quickly returns to the place that he was glimpsed from. So, yeah, Moon, he doesn't really have a counter play. When there's no static storm, he cannot stop Miracle from staying on top of him. Without the static storm, it's actually really difficult for them to fight at all. You can't catch Ember. That roar is, yeah, it's possible, but it's very difficult to catch Miracle with it. Yeah, and as long as Miracle has the, the flame guard out and the frost shield provided by Kuro, you're not going to kill him during that raw duration early on. Dyer's middle tower. Our tower's taken very early on here. 12 minutes, the tier one claimed by Nigma. As their three cores very much off to, to the slightly better start. 3k lead at the moment for Team Nigma. And this is, as we say, a lineup here in this game too, where they can make a lot happen now. They don't need to, to, to worry about sitting back, split pushing. They can make these plays. You have to remember that their lineup has to do this. If they're not doing this, something is going terribly wrong for their team. So they have to be ahead, they have to keep on making plays. So what Fighting Pandas can do here is they'll come in with a big movement down bottom, look to take this tier one. TPs are coming in from Nigma. Kuro and GH want to try and hold this. Extra TPs are coming in as Fighting Pandas start to poke behind the tower. Kuro has to frost shield himself and with Miracle TPing in, now Fighting Pandas, they've got to be careful. Static Storm has been dropped three eyes well as the back of fire. Ice path as well. The TA is falling low. Can they kill him? Finally, they will get We Are. 
But Nigma, they'll be sure to turn and take kills in trade as Miracle cleans up a double on the back lines. They get the other on the front lines, the rest of the team. Triple kill for Miracle. As Nigma continuing to just wipe pandas, pandas, they really put everything into that move. They wanted to take this tier one, get behind the tower. But with the lead that Nigma have, Nigma, they're going to turn up. They're going to fight back. Exactly. They're ready to do so, and they have the heroes that can excel at Fighting pandas, they were expecting maybe not a full fight, five on five. They were perhaps expecting expecting to uh, for their bluff to work, right? They all move towards that tier one, and they just give it in. They're like, all right. Like in that last game, if you remember, Nigma, they didn't fight for tier one objectives. They would just trade, right? But in this kind of a game where you're in front, and you also have these heroes that are super capable of fighting this early on, you damn bet they're gonna show up. You damn bet that they're gonna wipe you. A 6k lead now for Enigma. In terms of cores, only really Brile on fighting pandas that's able to, to hold some sort of power at this stage, keeping up with the three on Enigma. As we have the you know, MV's Drow falling behind. Bit of uh, pressure on him as well here as Mind Control eyes him up with the help of Kuro. There is a lot of protection for Envy though. They'll try and turn towards Mind Control, but the setup's going to be there for the three man curse. Miracle's ready to commit, jumps in with the remnant slide of fist. He's now godlike on the Ember, and he's going to continue to clean up the kill as he runs down Envy with the Flame Guard. Slide of fist, triple. taking down Moon. It's a very early triple kill here for Miracle, and he, you know he's not done yet. They've found Brile, Owie, the last man standing here for fighting pandas as they'll Old play John. around with him as well. Old Ultra kill for Miracle here at the 15 minute mark. You have to back off. Once you silence that Wyvern and you don't kill him in the silence, you have to just run. We forgot to say just how strong this hero is versus Draw Ranger. Always was and always will be. It's one of the counters to the Draw Ranger yeah. lineups. And it, it's got to be scary for, for Fighting Panthers. You saw that, you know, Miracle, he didn't even need to sort of play it, you know, perfectly. He, he jumped in with multiple remnants whilst the curse was still up. He didn't need that damage to kill them off. He didn't need the damage from the remnants. He just does enough damage with the rest of his tool set because of these high levels that he has and the items they're going to be hitting some very scary timings 1800 gold already into the maelstrom the, the once he has that there's not much hope at all for fighting panas here is to turn up this ember is going to cut you to pieces yeah the funniest part in that last team fight he ran through static storm as well oh, MV. and this is also kind of funny i guess <sighs> not more to crumble. they're starting to crumble this time around fighting pandas as Own. Yeah, this is just... It's getting messy. It's getting messy. And we we saw Fighting Pandas sort of hold on to the game, you know, game one, when it did get to a position where it looked pretty difficult. I mean, if that that was, you know, if game one was sort of put into a hard position for them, this this one's on extreme just, difficulty they right just, now. They're 13k behind. They just angry the beast. That's what they did. That's how it looks like, at least. Nigma is like, all right, no more arc wars and shenanigans. No more messing around. And it, it's just sort of the heroes they're on, right? We, we've seen in the past on the different teams that are on mind control. It does get caught upon here, and being alone should be an easy pick. They'll get. Can they counter? They'll get that? the doom. I mean, they will. They're already on to Bra and the rest of Enigma. They'll say you can happily take mind control. We're going to continue to bully your bigger core, take out the SF. As I said, the only one that was sort of holding his ground against We Are's TA and Miracle's Ember. These sort of kills, they're going to knock him back. Nigma are free to move as they wish across the map, look to take fights wherever they want. Dyer's middle tower. So difficult for fighting pandas to take team fights. Moon, one sli slight of fist is half HP. Kuro has two bracers. You're never killing this lich. That's the comparison between two position fives. Yeah. This is, you know, as I said, game one, you sort of saw. The, the drow strat that they did sort of done very well and executed in a manner mm -hmm. where they were behind they were pushed back but this time you know it's Nigma saying you cannot you cannot pull the same trick on us twice we saw what you did in game one you know Kuro he's been playing the game of Dota 2 for quite some time he's going to have an answer to it if you try and pull off the same draft two times in a row and we really are seeing that here in this game too as it's it's getting incredibly rough for fighting pandas every sort of element of, uh, uh, that they impressed us with in game one it's out the window so, so far this game has looked any good apart from like the first few minutes of gameplay from fighting so, so far it looks like they figured them out completely yeah. like the draw ranger can't deal absolutely no damage versus the mobility of miracle and the ta comboed shield from the Lich, and even if she does get to attack some targets, she always has to be careful of the Winter Vibrant that already has Interlands and Blink Dagger. So he's always going to be on point there, always will be in position to uh, counterplay you with, with the Winter's Curse.
How do you play this if you're fighting pandas? The, the map it's, feels very small if you're fighting pandas. Uh, your map is just your high ground in the base right now. You're you're leaving the base, you're, you're going to die. You, you've got this wall coverage here for Enigma inside the jungle, obviously, of fighting pandas. They're, they're never going to feel scared with, you know, as you mentioned, even like the Lich having those those tanky items, Kuro. They, they can walk blindly up to high ground on that lower part. They don't they don't care. They've, they've got a lot of ways to, to fight with. The levels are good on their support. Has really been brought into her position uh, for Enigma's Brile. He's gonna go for the TP out. Chains, oh, not oh. actually quite there from Miracle. Right. I believe, yes, yeah, Slide of Fist was still on cooldown, so I had to just go for the walk up and Chains play, and uh, in doing so, did, wasn't, was unable to, to quite close the gap in time. Maybe mana was an issue too, right? Or Slide. Yeah, it could have been. It was one of the two. Uh, but yeah, could, could not hold him back. So Brile lucky to escape there. He'll live another day for now. But now they're outside of their base. Hunting. Brian. Oh. He doesn't have a TP now. Uh, he sort of escaped one hell and, and stepped into another. One side of the map you have this Ember that's beyond godlike. The other you have Weed that's been just farming, getting everything that he needs to two shot you. Oh, Moon. He thought he's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Miracles, he's always coming back to finish off the job there. <laughs> yeah, he said this stage, you're... If that Denver sees you, you're dying. Yeah, you're not walking away from Miracle right now. As Roshan will be taken here, no problems at all for Team Nick, but no way. They're not even concerned that someone is going to come up and contest them, because they can't. They cannot. Easy, easy Rosh here for the raid inside. As Team Nigma continue to, to just have full control of the game right now. 18k lead here just at the 20 minute mark and they have four heroes at the top of the net worth. And we saw, as I say, you know, last game, Fighting Pan is shot a bit behind and were able to pull off some great plays uh, against like this, this split push lineup, right? But this time, they're going to have to pull out the plays against a team that is not scared to face them head first. And that's where the Drow lineup really starts to fall over. They can try and defend the high ground, but even that looks like a really difficult job to do. Moon, he might be dead. He's just dead. He's just gone. I'll be honest, it, it's almost getting closer and closer to the point where Finding Pandas may just call this. Snake King's trying to, to scrape at least a little bit of something there with that tier 2 push down bottom. But Nigma inside the base and with that Aegis... They're, they're inside their fountain. They're not inside their base. They're hiding. <laughs> A miracle ready to stand there and jump if a fight does begin. MV goes for a bit of a poke. A miracle just holds them at bay. They even fighting here through back door. Oh, they, uh, they, they did manage to cut it. Mm. A good cut was made off the creeps, so that will allow those racks to live another day. But you see here with all these item timings, very much faster than the averages that we see as all cores of Nigma have had a great game. And, you know, as I say, you, know, you look at like the, these heroes, right? The Weeha TA, the Miracle Ember. There's these are heroes you've seen these players pop off on. Now you're seeing these heroes, you know, these players pop off on both of these heroes on the same team. You got to deal with both of these problems. They get a catch on GH. We'll have to lay quite a lot down with the Static Storm and Macro Pile for that support kill. Remember, he has Blink, he has Eternal Lens. If he sees you, he will Winter's Curse. There we go, we are in. BKB get held back by the Raw, but already Miracle starting to pick up the back lines. Moon's dead, Mind Control's in. Envy's got to run, but the trap's been set up from Weeha. The slow into the Doom as Miracle double kill takes out Snaking. We finishes off Envy. You try to get something, you get the Wyvern, you, that's a five-man spo smoke into a position four kill. It's good, it's decent. Winter Wyvern needs to die for them to take any kind of team fights, but he has high back and they have taken just two tier ones, so he pours back mid and he's fine. He joins the fights again. At least Jakiro is trying to split push bottom, perhaps push it out a little bit, but he's gonna have to go base very soon. They need to defend. Now he doesn't have a TP. So uh, there'll be no Jakira here for this high ground push. I think, you know, that in itself is sort of 
Fighting Panda's throwing in the towel. Uh, I don't think Aoi's going to be able to split push a Rex down on his own. He's going to try. I mean, that's the only play he has. And yeah, he's called cool. no TP. Yeah. And that's the GG. It, it really is all over this game, too. 21k lead, 23 minutes in. Nigma making this one look easy. And I think, I feel like Fighting Pandas, they learn a bit of a lesson, right? You, you, sure, game one, you I, won with this draft. I think it's Nigma that learned but, the lesson, right? Well, it, it's sure, that. They, they knew exactly what to do. But Fighting Pandas, they gave them that chance, right? They picked four of the same heroes. You know, in all the series we see of Dota 2 over the years, when a team wins game one, one.
five seconds and end it off with like a TA if they want in that first phase. Mm -hmm. They can pick a support, whatever they want. It's just about, I think, getting comfort, getting heroes that have synergy and just can fight. That's right. it. Because, like, as, as much as it was uh, a great game one from, from fighting pandas to win that game, in this game, so it, it, it just looked like outclass. It didn't look like they belonged. The, the lanes weren't even going that bad for fighting pandas, and then they just got completely destroyed in fights because yeah. this time they could take it to them. And this was the standard enigma that we were talking about at the beginning of the series, mm -hmm. that they do that, right? Yeah, like, come out of lane stage, kind of, whatever, and then sometime in the mid game, oh, late game, like... Went crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because at 10 minutes, it was still pretty even. It was 8-6, and then, but at... What I looked at here at my notes is 1340 that had a complete team wipe, 6k lead, and it was like, wait, this is at almost like only less than 14 minutes. Yeah, that was the mid it's fight, a wrap. and then it's the bottom fight, and then the game was over. This game right. was decided in one minute, yeah. roughly. Two right. minutes, maybe. Yeah. Max. It's just, it's just over almost. Like, you can't really recover from that unless you pull some sort of crazy play out of the bag, and they didn't have the heroes for it. Yeah, so. they didn't have comeback potential at all. If you're FP, and let's not talk the draft, but just mentality. Yeah. You felt good after game one, you stuck out, you took it to a team that was supposed to just wipe the floor with you. And then they do, because fear was in game two. So where's your mind at right now going into game three? Is there still house money? Like if we lose, we're supposed to lose. I don't have to sweat too much about it. Or this was an opportunity that we missed. I think you're feeling confident enough that you know you can beat them in a game. At least you like, got one game. Yeah. that. To me, at this point, it doesn't feel like the free roll that you're saying. I've been in this situation a lot okay. where I'm against a better team. We take the first game and then we lose the next oh, two. two. Yeah. And it does not feel Reverse good. Reverse sweep is not good. It no. really does not feel good, especially when you kind of came into the series not feeling too good in the first place. And Second now you had a glimpse of hope and then it all just gets shattered. So I, I want to see from them in this draft. We do see that the Doom get taken out, so they took the yep, first pick, that, Wyvern. Yep. And oh, wow. instead of the Tiny, who's still in the pool, oddly enough, and they go for the Lich Abaddon themselves. This is what I was talking about. I don't really like Lich here because you just pick two side laners who don't care about the Frost Shield. So, all right, give me two. Uh, I mean, God, there's actually, <laughs> there's actually a pretty decent you amount, but like, I, I don't want to just randomly throw them out. Like. I mean, okay, well, they didn't even pick the side laner yet. They picked the TA. One way to deal with Lich is by killing the target so fast it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, I also like TA a lot against Abaddon. Abaddon never really catches her. Uh, you, the nice way to play against Abaddon is by playing elusively and popping his ultimate and disengaging. TA is really good for that. Um, I've played a bad and a decent amount myself. You just don't feel good at playing against TA. You never really want to run at her because she just melt strikes yeah. you and you lose half your health. Yeah. And none of the items you build other than Halberd eventually are, are kind of decent against TA. And your defensive tools aren't really that great either, because yeah. you have so much burst that it's the Aphotic Shield is not that often going to be... You can, like, remove the meld, right, but it's like... It's, oh, that's... Uh, uh, then he, she melts again. Yeah, kinda, five seconds like, later, yeah. A short cooldown, so... I like the Huskar ban. They did this last game. Team Nima, Viper again, I imagine. Yeah, same thing. Run it back. So now the question is, do you get Drow? But now they can get a second phase, against and they Wyvern have some TA? more info, but I don't... I personally don't think they should. No, I don't they, think this please do not. Get somebody that uses ice. Uh, gyrocopter, man. I think Gyrocopter is the hero that stands out to me third for fighting pandas. You make really good use of a bad and Lich. You do well against the Wyvern and the TA. Of course, last game, I thought it was a really good Razor third pick. Mm. And what I'm saying about that is I'm pretty sure fighting pandas has an idea of exactly what they want to pick, regardless of what Team Nygma does. So... That's the problem I have with their with their approach to last game. I really think you can plan the opener. I think you can, no matter what the opponent's doing, you can plan your three bands. Mm -hmm. You can kind of guess what their first pick's going to be and then pick your two heroes accordingly. And that's about as far as you can go in the draft Radiant team in terms of the script. Now they even ban the draw themselves, but like oh, last game, they, just, they clearly had a script for third and fourth pick on fighting pandas. I don't think you can do that. I, I think you actually have to adjust to what you now see. I think Gyrocopter stands out the most to me. Um, what if Envy's just like, I love Drow so much, and he's just clicking her, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I banned it! My waifu! No! Not like this! Yeah, I, I think it's... I, I actually think Drow's really good against Gyro, too, so I think that even says... Is Gyro a good hero? Like, just objectively General, right now? Yeah. Uh, we, saw, we saw like, GeekFam use it really well. They okay. picked it at least one, maybe both games. They used it really well mm -hmm. uh, with the IO. I think with anything that allows it to be more aggressive, 
Gyro is really. I mean, the last meta Gyro was picked with like the li with the likes of a and, and mm. Lich. These were the types of heroes you paired with it. I just think coming out of the gate, you want to pick a core third. I think that's generally best here. It leaves your supports flex, and then yep. you want something that deals with what a Ning what Team Ningma's got already. So they ban the Slark. I like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Really hard to play a bad inning in Slark. One of the worst lane matchups as well as game matchups. Just pick something that kills people through Wyvern, Cold Embrace. I don't really care. Like you said, you know, it's Gyro. Oh, but sure. I mean, that's a support that does it. It's decent against TA with oh. the damage over time as well. But by no means is Jakiro a woo. Right. That doesn't excite Nailed me at all. Pick, yeah. I don't like this support duo. Me either. I, I, it's like... You have a lot of slow and a lot of magic, but damn, you do nothing against BKB. Yeah. Like right now, you have just these supports will be pretty useless against BKB. Jakira does nothing, flat out just nothing. And Lich only has the Frost Shield. So when this TA gets a BKB in this game, she's currently untouchable. Right. Like it's actually just nothing stopping her at all. And on top of that, neither of your supports really has catch that's reliable. You have Ice Path, which is like kind of a, a toss up a lot of the time if the positioning is right. They both and just die to TA. Gaze right? doesn't count. And they also both just, Brothers, kind of, they just get they die really fast. Yeah. Tempting to pick TA or uh, the wire, the Jakiro, I get it because it's good against Cold Embrace and attack speed slows are nice against TA. But in my experience, most of the time, Jakiro against TA is kind of a trap. Like, you, you're, it sounds so good on paper, but then when it actually comes down to it in the game, whether you play it core against the TA or support, uh, once she has mobility and a BKB, you're useless anyway. It actually just doesn't matter almost what items you have. So TA is trapping him here. Yep. Yep. Ooh. Really sticking to the lore here. <laughs> <laughs> and they go for the Venge. First okay. Venge pick, actually. Finally. The tournament. Yeah, we talked about it. I, I mean, I love Venge. I think it's a good hero. People, yep. yeah, it's been nerfed a lot, but by no means, I think it was so good. <laughs> this animation so that, that, Yeah, that's the taunt from Venge. I like, I like it. Uh, yeah, I, it sets up so many good fourth picks for them, I think. Like, they can respond. Oh, they go Storm Spirit immediately. Snap it off. Uh, wow. Was not Storm Spirit against Wyvern. Um, against okay, T against TA, yeah, it's, I think that lane's pretty much a draw. Yeah. It's evenly skilled player. Yes! Dude, this is what I've been picking in pubs against Storm, dude. It ruins his game. He just ball lightnings on top of your team and you're boop! Play down that uh, pit of malice, and then he just gets locked down. And then you have clumsy net, and then yes. you root him, and then you root him, and then you <laughs> yeah, root him again. Yeah. I was, okay, yeah. I was talking about it before the tournament started. I think Underlord's one of the best offlaners right now. I can't believe nobody's picking it. All I think it lacks is aggression. If you have anything to follow it up with, like or like to set it up, mm -hmm. I think Underlord's super powerful. He's a great hero. It, it's really only bad lane matchup is Slark. Uh, every other lane matchup, you just eventually build a Halberd, and the laning stage itself isn't that bad. Like all the heroes that people pick, like Ursas and stuff, uh, they're, they're just not bad enough to warrant not picking Underlord. He's got this permanent damage spell now that like makes him scale pretty well. He gives you all the auras, he gives you all the team fight. I've, I've picked this against Storm like four times and it just doesn't lose because Storm has serious damage issues. You just buy pipe, Storm runs out of mana eventually, mm -hmm. and then just nobody dies. The other, the other thing about this hero, and even this combination, I think, the Venge Underlord, they trashed with this in the qualifiers. This is right... This is kind of one of their bread and butter strategies okay. for the patch. They, I think these two heroes are super good together as well. You have a very clear frontliner that's extremely hard to kill. And if you get close, he can still get swapped. So you yeah. use all these resources on getting into the fight. And it, it feels extremely difficult to pierce these defenses. Like there's just so much save, so much control. Um, Underlord in the lane with Vengeful, you have really good wave push. Whether the Venge is four or five, we'll have to wait and see. But no matter who Underlord plays with here, what you do is you skill fire Storm level one, you skill Splinter Blast, Wave of Terror, you push the wave yeah. into the tower. And then even if you have a bad matchup, they can't go on you because there's creeps. I, I'm telling you, so. there's just certain patches where Underlord really struggles to get out his foot off the ground. Like he mm -hmm. just can't get past level one through three without getting demolished for whatever reason this patch I've experienced in across five to 10 games that yeah. it, you just it, don't. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen anymore. And I think this hero is like super powerful with that situation being taken off the off, out of the equation and I've been raving about this hero and I'm so excited because for whatever reason nobody's picking it like it hasn't even been banned a single time uh, this yeah. entire tournament and I think it's super good so but I'm this excited. This is the kind of energy we want to see when the pick happens. These, yeah. This is the kind of energy we want to see. Thanks. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> continue your permanent damage strat but continue. Sorry, that surprised well, me. I was just going to say that for FP those are the kind of picks we want to see where we go, we can really see just how good it is. We can see that this can give them a way to win. We can see that they can dominate with this and we're not seeing that. I think 
crit has proven that Clinks is actually a pretty decent hero. He's kind of defined what you build. We've been seeing like the Orchid Nullifier, Blink, BKB type build on Clinks now. Um, you get the permanent damage from your Q. Uh, I think the only weakness Clinks has is late Wave Clear. And that's completely solved by Wyvern Underlord and TA. Yeah. So incredible. I think he's really enabled to do what he wants to do this game on Clinks. And he's also pretty good in landing against Abaddon. They have no real playmakers on him in the laning stage. Like, uh, you're only afraid in the laning stage on this hero. And now you have PL. Oh, I don't know about this hero against hey, Underlord. It's I don't... the same thing against Underlord. Damage issues out the wazoo. Yeah. For fighting powers. I feel like a Crimson a crimson Pipe Underlord counters this entire strike. Yeah. Uh, uh, There's yes. just, like, serious damage problems. Uh, so I'm a bit concerned about that. It is really pipe. good against the TA Clinks cores, the PL. is okay. very good. But I, I, I'm telling you, the reason why I love Underlord this patch is because every other carry other than Slark that I've picked it into has felt so powerful um yeah. and they could even consider radiance if they want to if they think they really need to deal with this pl sure. um just because they really have no damage for him that's yeah, the problem i have they have all the tank ability they want they need so if they can just end the game fast enough then you don't have to worry about killing him but if you have that late game way to deal with them too then that's better i think an honorable mention in this game as well we see I feel like Miracle has played Clinks less than five times ever in Pro Dota. Okay. I feel like it's pretty rare, and it should be him playing it because the I'm guessing yeah, the TA it's... will go to Weeha again. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting to see. Uh, Miracle historically is one of the carry players that has played the most heroes. His hero pool is just never ending, and they're not scared of pulling one out of the bag. Uh, he does have his occasional game where you can tell that it's not one of his 10 best. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm curious to see if the Clinks game will show a little bit of uh, of questionable decision making or, or if it's just in his element here. I really like, I mean, play I honestly think both lineups are pretty solid, but I really like what Team Nygma did here. They're bringing out heroes that I haven't seen too much that I, I think are underrated. And I'm really excited to see them prove that they're actually I like their good. Yeah, I like, I like it. Talk to me, game one, we talked about team fight, taking the right ones and not being able to do it on your own terms. All the team fight from Nygma out of, out of this world. For what we've seen in this draft, who has that advantage in team fight? If Team Nygma is allowed to group in the before the third minute mark, they won't be able to kill anybody on the side of Fighting Pandas. I'm telling you, Underlord with the auras is Underlord with Pipe. This game they can't ruins them. Yeah. So they need to destroy Underlord in lane. I think that's the key to this game. Yeah. If you shut that guy down, you have a chance in the game. It has to be plan. It's goal number one. Well, it is about that time. Game three. One team is going to be facing elimination soon. Will it be FP or will it be Enigma? Let's go to our casters for this deciding game three. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yes, this game three, everything on the line for these two teams now in this yep. first series for them. You know, let's see who can come out on top. Game two did not look too hot at all from uh, Fighting Pandas, whose uh, Team Nygma seemed to step up to the level that I think a lot of people were expecting to see from them, uh, at least in this series. The question is game three. You know, if Fighting Pandas, they have made changes. You know, it's not going to be for the same heroes that they did in game one. They're trying something a little different. The question is, is it going to be any good, Lizard? I mean, they're trying a completely different approach, and I think they needed to because Kuro actually left that draw in the pool. He did? He left it and just picked the Wyvern. He was like, all right, go pick it. Instead of that, instead of picking it, it was Envy and the boys that banned it out. They were like, nah, we're not getting trapped. No, yeah, I don't want to play against a wife and drow. I mean, even without the drow, it's still a, a very good sort of a a physical DPS lineup, right? You look at uh, Enigma, you have this 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 Venge, and then you know, finishing off with the two, obviously. then the TA, and then the, the two permanent damage builder ups, the builder up as the the the, um, the Underlord and the Clinks. You know, these guys, they you know, that that infinite scaling. I think it's really important for Brial to pop off. Okay, like that storm needs to do a lot this game and even if he does even if they win the mid game somehow panel has said it i don't see the damage to take down underlord no he's going to be such no. a problem as long as he itemizes properly but what is proper itemization i love the pipe crimson i also love the atos on i think yeah absolutely like, especially against the storm Bit of Malice, Atos, same against the Storm and the PL as well. It yes. works so well. Radiance as well that BSJ uh, mentioned. I believe that's an amazing item too versus PL. Um, if if they, you can get away with it. Yeah, if you can get away. The side of I mean, it. usually you don't have to go for that no. because you have enough damage. You have Clinks and TA. You don't really need that Radiance. However, you do have two pretty squishy cores on your safe lane and uh, mid lane, right? So there is a chance that eventually if they're out of position, 
they just die to the PL and the Storm, and the Underlord is ignored. One of the best ways to play against him, if you can't deal with him, is you just ignore him. You deal with everyone else, and then you come back to him. No, I mean, as Brian said, as you were saying, Underlord definitely a very strong hero. I believe when I was uh, looking at some of the stats before coming into this event, in terms of at least in pubs in high-level play, you know, this hero has like a 58% win rate, a very high win rate. It's <laughs> very, crazy. very strong at the moment. I don't think the same could be said for, for like a hero like Clinks, though. So I'm very interested to see what Team Nigma do with the Clinks because I this is a hero that you know you would have asked me before this event. What are we going to be seeing played a lot? Would not absolutely not be one of the heroes that I would have expected to really see at all. They picked uh, Dark Wars in the first game. It's also a hero that isn't yeah. really picked at all. And so, now they go with the Clinks as well. I, I feel like probably you know it's sort of testing things out a little bit. You know, as I said, it, everything. Everything's not really on the line of the series. They will have another chance. It's just the groups. Uh, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what the plan is from, from Nick. But obviously feeling confident after that game two. And yeah, here we have a game three, some I, miracle clinks. I think they, again, have, like in that game one, they have two glass cannons in TA and clinks. At the same time, though, they have a different lineup overall. You have two saves. You have Winter Wyvern to counter-initiate. You have a Ventral to swap you. And you have that tanky beast in front in the form of Underlord. Yeah. Much more uh, round up lineup than in that uh, game one. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see, as I say, so of course, you know, for those who may not have kept up with the patch, you know, Clinks has been revised once once again a few, what was it, a couple of months back when uh, we had the, the big old patch come through, yeah. you know, you're looking at the, the queue, you know, you're making plays, you're, you're getting that, that, that buff up of the extra health and, and having that armor debuff and obviously getting the kills with that debuff on an enemy will grant you that plus five permanent damage. Downside, of plus course, five. the ult, I, I, if I'm pretty sure the ult, it, it does nothing. It does, well, <laughs> play, it's basically. There. 24%, 26%, 28% base damage on each of the uh, the, the skeletons. It's not very scary, you know. Skeletons, you know, the men are spooky. Clinks is they're not, they're not really very spooky at all. Uh, but we'll see what Miracle could do here. Starting off at the top lane, they'll force back finding pandas here. Zowie did his best to get up and trying to get their hands on those runes. The mid lane matchup, yeah. Brawl Storm. You now Brian said it on the panel down the road. He's definitely going to have to watch out for the way he zips in against the route available from the Underlord. Uh, yeah. But uh, elsewise, it, it, would you say there's space for the, the Storm to have a good time this game? I think there is. He can do well. I don't think the TA, I mean, even if the TA does crush him in the lane, he can still go jungle and recover, right? So it's not big of a problem. What's important is that he creates enough space for this PL to start joining fights later on. Down bottom here, oh, only levels home moves. He hey, he's able to just snipe out the courier there from GH. GH was bringing it in a. Oh, sorry, no, GH was able to snipe the courier out of Moon. And he uh, made the, I think GH, they're going to get the kill on Moon for that. So there we have it. Not only does he get the courier, yeah. he also baits him in a bad position so that they, they get the first blood. But at least he has no courier, so he's back in the fountain. He can yeah, buy he his can, stuff. He can there get you the go. items out. He's you know, kind. All going to plan, I'm sure, for Moon. Yeah, first slot for Fenigma down on the bottom lane. And uh, definitely laying out the, you know, what, how do you sort of rate the, the pressure that Underlord and, and Wyvern can put on? Right? I think I they can do a lot. Yeah. Uh, but there is the glitch with a lot of mangoes that's con going to continue spamming them out. PL should be able to have some farm early on. They shouldn't be able to completely zone him out. And you can see that happening right now. GH might even fall here. There you go. Oh, Ooh. one more hit. He's actually out. He's out. He's got he the lives. wings out, he hits. he's able to get into the trees and they cannot quite chase him down, <laughs> playing around as well, they're keeping the south going, he's now able to turn his two, Man, Moon got, blast out onto Moon. Moon got outplayed hard there, he tried to go for that Nova two or three times, GH was just juking in the trees, losing that vision and he brought down Lich to 30% of his HP even though it was GH that was in problems at the beginning. Yeah, very good trade from, from GH in terms of yeah, not dying and, and doing so much damage in response. As you can see on the mid lane, Brawl is actually doing 15-1 versus 10-0 on TA. He's winning this lane right now. I think this lane, long time ago, TA had an advantage. It's not necessarily the same any longer. Storm can outfarm or, or be even with the TA. Yeah, I think so, right, with the, the remnants and such. It you're just one of those heroes that, that's able to shove the lane and get the creeps in a position where you can drop the nukes, guarantee CS. He had also a very good walk at the start. So. Farm for Envy at the moment, still taking quite a hit. 
HCS here. Yeah. Okay. One of the the cores, well, the core suffering the most at the moment in these early few minutes of laning. At this point, I think he suffers the most. Mind Control got level three, GH has level three, probably level two, Splinter Blast too, and this is pretty much the time in the game in which Envy takes way too much damage from the harassment. He's going to have to spend a fair bit of money keeping the regen out on him down on the bottom lane. And it's top lane. Miracle. Also, you know, not necessarily having a, an amazing time with the, the CS, but getting to the point where he can, with the two of them, just harass back the, the dual lane of Fighting Pandas, maybe even threaten a kill. See, down bottom, GH was able to kill off Moon. Top lane, Snake, he's trying to go for the, the aggression on Miracle. Oh. It's actually going to pay off. The two of them get in the face of the Klinks, take him down. Kuro cannot find Snaking either. Kuro might Kuro, fall as well. He's burning as well. Owie. One more hit. More. Oh. He just do it. Oh, he no, but he's got the fairy fire prepared. Kuro will survive. I actually noticed a significant increase in uh, fairy fire purchases on supports and, of course, early on in the game. Uh, you get more damage now, so it's pretty, a pretty solid item. It's more expensive, but it's still fine. GH. A bit of an attempt to close the gap on the wife, but hard to get past mind control as he can stand and trade hits back very, very confidently. And they are doing a great job with the spam down here, Enigma, just keeping both Envy and Moon very low. It's very difficult for Envy to farm. Yep. Uh, that was his last tango now as well, so entirely out of regen, Envy. At least what's happening is you're playing versus a Wyvern and an Underlord, right? So because of their AoE spells, they will be constantly pushing in and you will be able to farm under the tower. One thing that Nigma did not do so far, at least very well, is side pull. They're pushing in, but they're not side pulling. So Envy is still getting creeps under the tower and a lot of experience too. Maybe they could utilize that side pull a little bit more. Oh, another kill from GH. Yeah, he's able to, to find Moon there, who's trying to, to play around with the pull. He was very low, though. He was playing with 10% HP. GH just sniped him out. Looks like he didn't even need to use the, the Splinter Blast. Just sort of right-clicked him down with the burn. They should be pushing now, uh, as it's the catapult wave, right? So they will try to preserve it for a little bit longer to pressure the Tier 1. Dire structures are fortified. And for the struggles that Fighting Pandas are having down bottom, top lane at least, you know, snaking, he's he's getting free farm on the Abaddon. 30 CS, not so. really contested. Also got that kill on Miracle. Mid lane is doing fairly well for them too, 45 CS on Storm. Now we'll see what sort of uh, build Bra wants to go for on the Storm, if it, it's going to be... Anything like that, the Kaya straight into a Bloodstone, if, or if he does want to go for the, the Kaya Orchid build and uh, start making plays himself with the Silence. Mm. It's bottom. Again, Moon just using all his mana to try and spam out Mind Control's Underlord. Control's prepared with Salves. Again, Envy's had to have that extra stack of Tangos taken out to him. They did a really good job versus this Lich on the lane, but Lich is such a pain to play against right now. He stacks up nine mangoes in his inventory and just spams Noah on you. They're so beefy here. You have Abaddon and Jakiro, they have a thousand HP each. Even with the minus armor, even with Klinks hitting you super hard from distance, it's very difficult for them to die. Definitely, off these lanes, I think, yeah, the, the Klinks is still going to be the big question mark on Enigma's on side, because Fighting Pandas, they got great ways to close the gap. You know, we saw us earlier them getting away with that kill. You know, with, with this about having such a good start, and Brawl having a good time as well, you've got these two heroes that are going to be able to just run or zip him down. Ow, oh, Ice Path. Ice Path onto the two of them. Makuro will fall. They do lose Snaking, so a trade in favor of Enigma this time round. Miracle's they, trying to chase. They might if, get him. Uh, one more hit will do. Now he's trying to juke it out. The illusion is after him. Illusion will give the vision or perhaps even take him down. Let's Ooh, see. Oh, but ah. of course, with the respawn coming in, the illusion will disappear. Very close. So Owie will survive. 
But I completely agree with you. They have these gap closers in yeah. PL and the Storm, right? And then you have the follow-up from Abaddon to help you out. Yeah, lots of ways to, to run down a clinch that, for the most part, is going to want to sort of stand his, his position and get the damage out. He'll have to, to, to constantly be sort of ducking and diving outside the fights with the Skeleton Ward, which you can only do so much. You can see that the tier 1 on this bottom lane is on 90% HP. Oh, snaking. Actually getting the chance to stick and pop a shield here. Casualty now. He's turning the right play, though. All right. Got Howie by his side. He even throws out the dust. the dust to slow down Miracle. As uh, Miracle did actually pop a skeleton while trying to, to catch up for the kill. Shakira rotating back mid. Hard to make a play on Weehar, though, especially with the, the trap set up around this area. And the DD on him, so... Yeah. So if anything, just acting as a deterrent in case Weehar got ideas about diving. I love how he's doing this. He's not farming his side of the map. He's controlling the rune and at the same time farming the Radiant jungle, right? Preventing Storm from having that camp for himself. Yeah, very, very important, like, uh, to, 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 do good, to do against Heroes Light Storm. You know, one of the reasons why they can get that big boost to farm early game is just the way that they can take those two the mid lane very very easily but the storm has to be the active one we talked about this the underlord will not be stopped on the bottom lane by the pl pl needs to farm in the jungle moon meander just needs to die here that's it another kill for the two of them he was insolent he tried to defend versus an underlord and the wyvern and he fell oh, but is. this is good bro makes the move on to miracle it's dusted up cannot escape exactly. very very nice nine minutes in it's an early rotation from the Storm, but, you know, just, if he sees these sort of chances to make these plays, it's hard for Nygma to sort of answer Wee? the time. He might be dead here. I get the drag back. He, Envy's there as well to offer up the extra bit of damage. Lance is down sentry as well. Weehaw, he's running. He's got the refraction back up, but very easy for them to keep oh, on the top. They do get the curse. Mm -hmm. oh. What? what? Oh, it was an illusion. Oh, uh, it was on PL did, illusion. He so did this, so he instantly fell away, and that attempt from GH not successful. Kinotic, by the way, pretty good item for him to get. I mean, as long as you, you curse the right target. As long as you don't use it on illusion. I mean, obviously, a hard play from the call. He did. He Maybe if he didn't. Hard for him to read which was the real PL. Maybe if he didn't have the item, the illusion would have disappeared by the time he got there. True. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, neutral items Fatal messing moves. up plays. But uh, no, two back to back. back. Great moves from Pandas. Maybe getting aggressive on Miracle, getting aggressive on We Are. Mm -hmm. And you see that. that, well, they're the movements of Lich. Yeah, but he's he feeling very safe down on the bottom. Not too safe as he has lost his life uh, a, a few times. times. Yeah, but uh, you do that sometimes. You know, you know you're not the most. Mo Bala supports right as Lich, you know. you're, you're there, you're picked to, to keep the safe lane very, very safe. For as safe as you can against a, a wide lane. and underlord lane. And once the underlord continues pushing and your PL is out, you just try to delay the tower push as long as possible. Another dive, and should be another kill. Brile, yeah, with that for the Kaya. second time, seeing an opportunity to play aggressive on the top lane and gets away with it. With that Kaya, that was an easy kill, um, but they need bigger targets, right? You need Miracle, you need EA. However, if you kill that Eventually, you can turn that into a tier one push. I mean, Nigma is very heavily committing here to try and take this tier one tower. They've got the three of them. GH is there with the backup and save in case one of his cores gets gone upon. And they'll take it. The tier one tower in the mid lane's down. Nigma find an objective with no answer really at all, other than Snake King's presence. Mm. They had no interest in trying to hold that pandas. Yeah, Underlord is kind of doing the same thing. He is playing around his bottom lane, pushing in the tier two and farming the jungle. So they are finding a lot of farm on this map. GH. Miracle. Hey, he's going to be able to get the wraparound behind the tower. And Owie is gone. TPs will come in. GH is falling low. Miracle's got to try and escape this one. He's got the help of the magic missile from Kuroki to try and stop it. Yeah, he gets the courier. He may not get out, though. Snaking is already on top of Enigma, still trying to take this fight as it's a little split up. Snaking's going to look to deal with Kuro. They have lost Moon. Kuro also able to, to continue to run away. Snaking cannot spend any more time trying to finish off the kill. I think Brial needed to rotate there, right, towards that bottom lane. Ooh. Found the team too, though. With this DD, I mean, he, in the bottle, he could try for further plays. Miracle's going to look to scout them out with the skeleton walk. Mm. 
Sí. You can't really go for Storm because of Abaddon, right? Yeah, I mean, you can't really time, go for Abaddon because of the yeah, borrowed sign. Exactly. You can't you can't make a play there. No, I think he's it's probably in his best interest not to show here Miracle. Well, also, one of the reasons why these sneaky heroes aren't picked as much as before are the sentry wards, right? And these choke points that are constantly sentry, it's hard for Klinks to just run into your base undetected, into the side of the map, that is. But oh, overall, yeah. a close game, right? It is at the moment. Both teams Double trying damage. for plays here. And indeed, Miracle not going to show quite yet. He's going to continue to stay on top of Brawl. Knows that Brawl's a little low on mana. Uh, but uh, yeah, not low enough really for Miracle to see an opportunity to go. It is at a level 11 storm. Brawl, top net worth. You have to be careful how you poke at him. Mm. And he's going to have that shrine to work with. Perhaps after he uses it, he might be on the hunt himself instead. Uh, I think this is the closest game in the series so far. I think both of these teams have ways of winning it. Just um, as long as they play to their strengths and play when they reach their power spikes. Envy. Brow, run stop. Envy might be able to get Vols as well here. I mean, that's if Brow gives him the time to get in. Mind control, very what? ambitiously trying for the, the rift out of there. There's no chance he's getting away with that one, Brow. What, what did we say? He ha They have no damage for the Underlords? At, at this point of the game, they certainly do. Even with the hood, it's not enough to save him. Mid lane, Miracle finds the opportunity to take down Moon. Will just be a support kill, nothing more. Chain Frost was thrown out in time from Moon to stop Nigma from being able to, to catch a, a further target. Right. Snake is able to easily walk away with the borrowed time. It's still only plus 15 damage on Miracle. I think that's also an important thing to look at. And Envy is finding space. He is. He's, getting, are, he's, yeah. he's, he's going for, for some smart positions on, on the map. Always reading where, where fighting pandas aren't and not being caught out at all really fighting pandas they're pretty much afraid to move in their own jungle unless they do it like this unless they smoke up and try to reclaim it together let's see what enigma can find they have their eyes around this mid lane fighting pandas are rather split up at this point they may Radiance bottom get a catch here as snaking, top. but snaking, yeah, it'll show at the tier two. They will, they would have to dive and abandon underneath yeah. a tier two tower with borrowed time. There may be reactions if they do try for this. They surely have four of them, but again, they, you know, you feel they it. It's, it's a yeah. very awkward target to commit on, and they, they certainly don't want to. He's uh, next to tier two. Yeah. He's next to the tier two. Yeah, you don't you want can't. to go on Abaddon. It's just the worst possible target for you to go on. So not finding anything there with that smoke plate. You can see the Radiant Wards are... Actually, there's one ward directly in their jungle. It's just keeping tabs on these movements from Nigma, And because of that, they're just playing in the dire jungle or around it. Yeah, and I like, I like this as well from Bryle. He's, you know, he's feeling confident this game, knows that he can go for, for the Kai straight into the, the full Bloodstone, uh, especially with the heroes that he has around him, having that save potential from both Moon on his Lich, snaking on the Abaddon. You know, there's a bit, as long as Bryle doesn't dive too deep and too far away from the rest of the team, snaking and Moon, they're going to be able to have back covered and make sure that he can get in, get out, and get these, these easy kills that he's been able to find so far. You know, at, at the moment, if he gets on top of heroes like Kuro, he, he's able to take them out before there's time for Nigma to do anything about him. Yeah, I'm just waiting for a Glimmer on GH and a couple of Bracers on Vengeful Spirit. That's going to make it a little bit easier for them to survive. But Kuro... Here we have, you know, these are these easy kills I'm talking about. But anytime he finds Kuroki at the moment, that is a very free kill for the Storm. GH is in problems perhaps as well. There is a Shrine there and Mind Control, so... It's a little too deep for Fine Pandas to step in. They're going to move back now. Play it safe, buy some more time for Brawl to get that Bloodstone completed. So far, Brawl has been on point. I'm just uh, thinking, like, what will he, his item progression be like after the Bloodstone? Because he needs to find a way to deal with the Pit of Malice and the rules that they've got. For sure, you feel, I feel like he's got to get something defensive, right? It may just be the BKB. I think it's definitely a good option. He left an item, Dragon Scale. He just left it there. He did. Wait, Envy? Yeah, it's just there in the creep camp. Oh, that's a nice one as well. What, five HP, regen, five armor, and a little bit if of it, uh, if, little bit of tick damage on your right clicks. Yeah, if Nigma find it, that would be pretty good for them.
Mind control. Yes. Ooh, maybe with the Winter's Curse he can live. The Macro Pyre is burning. Brial locked down momentarily. He's going to go quickly for the zip into trees and look for the escape. Howie will also try for the TP. Envy. He's Envy. like, where's my item? Wait, guys. <laughs> and what we had, so Brial did get out. And I think, uh, is, are we going to be safe as well? His TP's nearly done. Uh, I'm not sure. Quite sure if there was anything here to, to cancel it. But uh, still, I mean, it seems to be for the story of this game, even though the farm is close, you know, Enigma very much the ones that have been sort of scrambling to, to find kills. But Fighting Pandas are doing a very good job at avoiding it. Whereas you look at Fighting Pandas' side, you know, Brial, he's keeping up in farm because he's getting away with these pickoffs. He's, he's getting, getting in, kills, yeah. getting these kills on the supports. And uh, even in that time, he nearly killed Mind Control again. Mind Control is very lucky that the backup was in town from Kuro and the gang. And able to get away. They cannot fully punish him. Perhaps the mind control itemized in a way in which he goes crimson.